Hi, welcome back. In this session, I'd like to focus on finding the right mix of debt and equity for your company. You might say, well, we've talked about that already. In fact, in the, in the intrinsic approaches, the approaches that I like more, the cost of capital approach and the adjusted present value approach, you try to find the right mix of debt and equity for your company by focusing on the company, its cash flows, its risk, its growth, which to me seems to be the sensible way in which to set debt ratios. That said though, most companies don't look at what's right for them. They look at what everybody else in the sector is doing and try to be as close as they can to the rest of the sector. So if everybody else borrows a lot of money, you borrow a lot of money too. Why? Because if you don't, you will look strange. It's an odd way to set debt ratios, but it is in fact what I call the me too approach to deciding how much to borrow. And many companies adopt the me too approach. And with the me too approach, all of those rules we set, aside, set, up, set up when we did the intrinsic approach can be put to the side. There are five steps in the Me Too approach. Let's go through the five steps. And I'm going to use a company I've talked about before as my example, Amgen. In my cost, of, with using the cost of capital approach, I concluded that Amgen had too little debt, that its optimal debt ratio was 50%, and a debt ratio of 21 to 22%, it was under levered. Let's see if that finding continues to hold when I compare Amgen to other companies in its peer group. So the first step in this process is defining your peer group, finding the companies that you will get compared to. Now already you can see there's going to be a subjective judgment, a multiple subjective judgments involved in this. And here's the first thing to remember. In much of the world, when you think about your peer group, it's other companies in the same sector. So as a biotechnology slash pharmaceutical company, Amgen is going to get compared to other biotech and pharmaceutical companies. There's a geographical twist to this comparison. Usually analysts try to compare companies to other companies in the same market. Why? That's the way, that's the way it's always been done and perhaps because of differences in capital markets and tax code across the world. And finally, if you have enough companies, you might add other criteria. You might compare your company to other big companies because you're a big company or other growth companies because you're a growth company. So using that process, let's find the peer group for Amgen. These were the judgment calls I made. I decided to look at biotech and pharmaceutical companies in the US that were publicly traded with a market cap greater than 10 billion. Completely arbitrary, you say? I'm guilty as charged. With that, with that sampling, because that's inherent in a peer group, I end up with 20 companies in my sample. The second step in the process is to find a debt metric that you're going to compare across these companies. And here you have two choices to make. Do you want to use book value or market value? Or debt as a percent of capital or debt relative to cash flow? When we did the cost to capital approach, our focus was entirely on debt to capital and market value terms. But because this is a peer group comparison, there is no right answer here. It depends on what everybody else is doing. So if CFOs and equity research analysts in the sector use debt to EBITDA as their proxy for how much debt you have, that's what you're going to focus on. If they use debt to capital in book value terms, you're going to use book value. So the choice then becomes what everybody else is doing, not what's right for the company. So here's the choice I decided to make for Amgen. I abandoned EBITDA because for pharmaceutical companies, EBITDA doesn't make much sense as a measure of cash flow because you've got R&D and other expenses. If this were an infrastructure company, I might have chosen debt to EBITDA. I also abandoned book value because accountants do a horrific job of estimating book value for pharmaceutical companies because the biggest single capex of these companies, which is R&D, is treated as an operating expense. So I'm gonna end up using market value debt to capital as my primary proxy for debt, though I'll keep track of the book value and the debt to EBITDA numbers. Next step in the process, so the, the numbers that I have for all of my companies are listed here for all 20 companies, including Amgen, and you will see the debt to equity and debt to capital. The first two columns are the book value ratios, the next two columns are the market value ratios, and the last column is debt to EBITDA. So you can already see, looking at the market value ratios, that Amgen has about 21.5% as its debt to cap ratio. And the question we're asking is, is that a higher or low number relative to this peer group? So now comes the comparison part and you have to compare yourself to what's typical in this sector. You're saying, how would I know what's typical? Draw on basic statistics, compute a simple average. The problem with the simple average is outliers can pull it out. So you can compute the median, which is the 50th percentile. And if you want to get a range, you can look at the 25th and the 75th percentile, the first and the third quarter, or the 10th and the 90th percentile. Get a sense of what companies in the sector do. And that's basically what I did for my companies and compared to Amgen. So you see Amgen highlighted in red. 
and the average, the median, and the first and the third quartile listed for each of the ratios. And if you look at the market value in the debt to EBITDA numbers, it looks like Amgen is over levered. Its debt ratio is higher than what's typical for the sector. On a book value basis, it's, it's about where the re remaining companies are. But given that we said book value doesn't matter, at least based on this comparison, it looks like Amgen has too much debt. Now, most analysts would stop here and most CFOs stop here, but I think there's a fourth step you can take. We know that comparing the average of the median is a shortcut. That when we do this, we're, we're assuming that the company we're analyzing is very similar to the typical company in the sector in its fundamentals, the tax rate it faces, its variance in earnings and cash flows. And we know that's not true. If you can somehow control for differences in tax rates and differences in you know, how volatile earnings are or how observable assets are. In other words, a trade-off we talked about that. If we can find proxies for those and control for those differences, have a much better answer, right? And there are two ways you can control for differences. One is qualitative storytelling and the other is statistics. I'm going to draw on statistics because I think it gives me a better shot of controlling for differences. Here's what I did. I took the debt to capital ratio for the 20 companies that I have and I ran a regression against EBIT as a percentage of enterprise value. That's a measure of how much cash you have and the more cash you have the more you should be able to borrow and the standard deviation in earnings of each of these the higher the variance in earnings, the less you should borrow, more risk. I did try other things like tax rate and insider holdings. They didn't seem to be statistically significant, so I threw them out. My end regression with an R squared of close to 60% was debt to capital. And what you see here is the breakdown. 4.99% is the base number from which you build up plus 1.48 times EBITDA to divide by enterprise value. That gives me a measure of how much my cash flows help. And the more cash I have in the form of EBITDA, the more I can borrow. And the higher my variance in earnings, the less I can borrow. You're saying, what am I going to do with this? I plunked in Amgen's EBITDA as a percent of enterprise value, which is about 7.5%. And Amgen's standard deviation earnings, which is about 39% into that regression. I got a predicted debt to cap ratio of 13.92%. Its actual debt ratio is 21.46%. Once I control for the higher risk that seems to be in Amgen's earnings and the fact that their enterprise value to EBIT, that their cash flow, their EBITDA as a percent of enterprise value is about 7.5%, I end up with a predicted debt ratio well below the, uh, with their actual. They're over levered. Final step is remember that what you're making as a judgment when you do this analysis is a judgment about your company relative to the group you're comparing it to. You expand that assessment, maybe you make it all pharmaceutical companies or all companies in the market, you could get a very different assessment. So you could actually find your company to be under levered relative to sector and over levered relative to the rest of the market. So this is a very, very specific judgment you're making given your peer group and given the debt metric you've chosen on it does look like Amgen, Amgen is over, over levered. As I said, my preference is to use a cost of capital approach. But I also know that many CFOs, many equity research analysts will still make, compare me to the rest of the sector. So I always do this as a second step in my process to see if I can make my, my sales pitch around whether a company has too much or too little leverage a little easier to make. And in this case, my job got a little more difficult because even though my cost of capital approach suggests that Amgen is, is under levered, it's going to be a tough sell convincing Amgen to borrow more money because their defense is going to be, hey, look, everybody else in the sector doesn't borrow money. Why should we? So keep that in mind when you think about debt ratio, that you, what you think about the optimal is important. But looking at what the rest of the group is doing is just as critical in getting companies to act. Thank you very much for listening.